It's a second helping of Technicolor Mayhem. This is Sega Masters. We've come to our last Western release game of 1987, and it's a sequel to one of the more beloved titles for the Master System. Today we have Fantasy Zone 2, the 2 mega second chapter in the saga of Sega's sentient fighter ship Opa Opa, who actually made a cameo appearance in our Zillion episode not too long ago. You may remember the original Fantasy Zone as one of Sega's earliest releases in North America. In fact, we covered it all the way back in episode 6. This arcade port was among the first of the so-called em ups that replaced the traditional sci-fi settings for shooters with a colorful, psychedelic world. Despite a few rough edges, many Sega diehards have fond memories of Fantasy Zone, so not too surprisingly, a year later, Sega brought out this console-exclusive follow-up, also known as the Tears of Opa Opa. Of course, with this card comes the obvious sequel questions. Does it fix the flaws of the original game? Does it add any new features? Or is it just simply a copy and paste rehash of the original? We'll certainly find out in this video. After a few minutes on the title screen, you get the scrolling text that lays out the plot. Supposedly, this game takes place 10 years after the original, where Opa Opa saved the Fantasy Zone from an invading army that his own father was forced to lead. Now a decade later, the zone is threatened by another invasion force, and Opa Opa heads out to once again save the day and maybe even learn the truth about his father's actions in the process. Just like the first game, Opa Opa must soar through each horizontally scrolling stage and take out the enemy generators with his twin guns and bombs, while also blasting the waves of smaller baddies constantly swarming at you, and of course grabbing the money left behind. While this sequel does reuse the core gameplay from the original, a few changes were also made to shake things up. For starters, instead of just one long strip, each level is now divided into several segments that are accessed through these warp points which are revealed by destroying the generators. Basically, you have to travel through all the parts of the level and clear them out before finding the special red warp that leads to the boss. The shops from the first game are back as well, sporting a wide selection of special weapons, bigger bombs, and upgrades for you to purchase with your collected cash. But this time, instead of floating around at random, the located in a stationary place can be entered and even re-entered at any time. Granted, most of the special weapons still have timers that limit their use, and they have to be equipped immediately upon exiting the shop. But having the shop in one spot gives you much more say when you can unleash your upgraded offense. It even allows you to grab a special weapon right before a boss fight. Once all the generators are dusted, Opa Opa has to then enter the Red Warp to duel with the level Guardian. It's your basic showdown. Dodge around the debris the boss shoots at you while returning fire and hopefully hitting its weak spot. Do enough damage and the boss explodes into a pile of money you can scoop up before moving on to the next stage. The game has 8 total stages, culminating in a boss rush where you fight all the Guardians a second time before facing the final challenge. As good as the graphics were in the first game, the visuals in this sequel surpass it. The stages all look excellent with some real crazy looking backgrounds, and the parts of each level have different looks while keeping to the overall theme of the stage. The nicely drawn characters sport some good animation, and the bosses are also well designed and detailed, though once again your battles with them take place against some plain solid code backgrounds. The one slight down under the presentation is the soundtrack. While the background tunes are nice, they don't quite match up to the charming music from the original game. Plus the sound effects aren't much more than the standard beats and so forth. As far as the gameplay goes, Fantasy Zone 2 plays pretty well, and the simple controls are mostly responsive. However, the difficulty is just as tough as the first cart, if not even tougher. Enemies will constantly come at you fast and furious, especially in the later levels, forcing you to be on your toes. It doesn't help that Opa Opa, in his normal state, is rather sluggish, which can lead to some frustrating deaths when you're unable to dodge incoming enemies in time. You'll definitely need to purchase the speed upgrades at the first opportunity if you want to make your life easier. At the same time, the game offers you more of a fighting chance in the form of a life bar, which enables you to withstand several shots before you perish. 
and you can find hidden power-ups in certain levels to extend it. Definitely a welcome alternative to the one-hit deaths in the original game. But just like most shooters, when you do expire, you lose any upgrades you had equipped, and your next ship starts in the underpowered default mode, forcing you to somehow survive until you can reacquire your power boost. While the warping feature works for the most part, there's no indicator of which warp actually leads to which section. As a result, it can get a little confusing traveling between sections, especially in the later stages which can have as many as five parts. Not to mention there's no radar to show you which areas still need to be cleared out, so you might find yourself having to scour a bunch of nearly deserted screens trying to find the last few generators to finish off. Of course, once all of your lives are exhausted, it's back to the title screen. But level 3 does contain a hidden shop that sells you one continue. So despite a few issues, Fantasy Zone 2 is a well done shooter for the Master System, and proves to be a fine sequel as well. This game carries over the fun action of the first title, and the new additions do a good job of keeping the cart from feeling like a glorified expansion pack. Granted this game has a few flaws, and the difficulty can often be discouraging, but the game is never really unfair, and can be beaten with enough practice. Overall, Fantasy Zone 2 is a definite must for any Master System library, or anyone that enjoys shoot'em ups. And with that, 1987 comes to a close. Our next episode will begin our look at 1988, which would basically be the peak of the Master System in the US, as well as the beginning of its rise in Europe. Sega would even enlist some help to compete against the growing Nintendo juggernaut in the States. Whether that alliance was actually successful is another story.